beautiful original paintings. Now there's so two things that I do. I've got the show coming up that's going to have. Explain it all later. I got the show that's coming up that's going to have uh, Nutcracker oh. and other legendary performances. Mm -hmm. It's going to be mostly the material from performance things. Mm -hmm. So on here I've got. Some early shots, that's the heater I had to come up to turn off. I've got some early shots of the Nutcracker. Mm. Okay, so I've got the opening scenes in here, which will be most memorable. A wonderful one of Grandma dancing, having a little difficulty with 
how light this one is of Clara and the Nutcracker sailing away on the balloon. In addition to that, I got a lot of legendary performances. This performance here was done at Jonathan Swift's back in the 70s when the Mingus Memorial Band played its first gig. This, I went with Jack Bernstein and Justin. We sat at the same table and Justin said, uh, Jack said, oh, oh, Bill, that was so sensational. I want copies of this. So he reached in his pocket and took out money. If you know Jack, he's like, yeah. And he gave me the money and he said, I don't care what they look like, give me copies. I did my first Xerox copies of these, okay? And then they came out so bad and were so different and so good I began to explore it. So I've checked on the archival nature of all the pigments in the Xerox process. I learned how to eliminate the non-pH content or the pH, the, the papers that weren't archival, how to make my orders. I learned how to work with the technicians and do it. And then lo and behold, Canon Laser came in with a new process with an encapsulated rather than a thermographic deposit and shifted all the gears. I still do some thermographic ones. They turn out differently. Now the originals here are all done in watercolor. These are all watercolor here. originals, okay? The first step in here is to shoot half tones of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how this half tone came out. Oh. All right, here's grandma. Now, I've been working the past few days on making news releases. These go on to the news releases, and I write Christine Timmon and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Kitty calls after and makes logical. Saw Tom Harrell the other day at uh, Scholars mm -hmm. and did those. These are Tom Harrell at Scholars. Okay, bassist Ron Carter, saxophonist Javon Jackson and wonderful Tom Harrell. Okay. The other part of the oh, show... Oh, these the originals of those? Uh, these right here? Yeah. No, the originals are over there, and we'll pull them out in a minute if you want. Uh, this happens to be Art Farmer and, and Percy Heath's concert over at the De Cordova. Mm. And these will be black and white sketches, and I'm, I'm piecing them together to make a composition now. I'll use one of the... Uh, duplicating processes, probably Xerox to do this, reassemble it and make a unit out of it, okay? The other part of the show is going to be Harvard, oh. its yards, and the square. So I am now assembling all of my originals of Harvard and the yard. I shoot a big half tone of these, okay? They'll go out with the news releases. This will then be color Xerox to the same size. And then certain ones of these will be color Xeroxed up much larger. Okay. I'm going to just take you through. So here's some performance ones. These are additional performance ones that have already been turned into half tones. These were some ballet performances. Okay. And they've been shot in different techniques so they can be used. This happens to be uh, the... Uh, um, I've got selections from Bath and Steed. I'm trying to remember the name of the brass ensemble that's doing that. It escapes me at the moment. These are additional Harvard Yards. These were just ones that I did for... Oh, they're all different. Yeah, and they're all in different orientations, oh, yeah. okay? So, for instance, when I'm doing this one, I'll gang them all together. Uh -huh. Here's Harvard Square Theater. I happened to paint it the day they were playing Ginger and Fred, Trip to Bountiful in Brazil. One of my favorite disjointed films. Uh, this is the young kids at uh, the old Boston Ballet, and all of these young girls were competing for Clara. Okay, so these are. I'm going to reach over here. Now you saw the half tones before. Okay. Oh, I'd love to see these again. All right. Now, this grouping in here is the group from, and I've oriented them in different ways so that my edges 
can keep the yellow. So I have a small, oh. when I tear these out and mount them, they'll all have a small yellow. That'll also help me code when this has been done. I don't run long editions, I run very short editions. Okay. And the orientation on the sheet is simply so I get best reproduction. I see. Okay. okay. This one here starts with one of the little dolls. This one was done in 77. The various other ones here, like the dancing snowflakes in the forest, a little grouping of the snowflake dance, and then the snowflake king and queen, or whatever they were called, mm -hmm. will be this series of three. And this one's already done. We'll look lar a little later. Well, actually, down at the Kennedys, they had this large set together. The other one I was looking for shots. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Who is it? Uh, this is trumpeter Tom Harrell, mm -hmm. who's an amazing new trumpet player. And Javon Jackson, uh, an equally amazing uh, mm -hmm. new tenor sax man. Uh, Lewis Hayes, the drummer. James Williams, the pianist, who's right. taken over doing the kind of work that uh, Miles and Blakey used to do in discovering new young talents, and wonderful old veteran Ron Carter. So with yeah. this rhythm group, these incredible new jazz lights were performing at Scholars the other day. That's the kind of, of performance thing I do. Did you do these right on the spot while you were there in this watercolor form? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. I go and sketch immediately, and here's a concert at Symphony Hall. Mm -hmm. I think this is Dunyani and the Cleveland. There seems to be enough players up there to be the Cleveland at this time. Um, this is a pony pull. Huh. Okay, great performances. Walt won. He moved this many cement blocks with mm -hmm. this team. Okay, there's a large print of that downstairs that you can see how that goes up. Uh, this is the Border Cafe. Oh, yeah. Okay, when it was first opened over there. Mm -hmm. And the food was great and the servings yes. were large. Now it's popular. Enough said. <laughs> uh, William Styron, reading from his new small book, the one about his bout with depression. This was a reading that was done at the Boston Public Library. So I'm grouping these. Now, these other ones in here are various parts in Harvard Yard. For instance, this is a painting of Lowell House. Mm, yeah. oh. Okay. So now with all of these, I'll make the Xeroxes. And the Xeroxes, there's a small amount of loss or change. Okay. So here's okay. a sample of the original. All right. So I'm going to take this one out and we're going to give you a clean background on both of these. Yeah, good. Why don't we just reach over and... The left one is original. The one on my side is the original. Okay, and the yeah. one on the opposite this side... Is the... Now the thing that happens uh, as wow, an artist, that's I've got a complete on. range of pigments. Mm -hmm. Okay, I may have four yellows, mm -hmm. three or four reds from cadmium red light, to cadmium medium, to cadmium deep. I'll have all of the new quinacridone pigments. But the laser process only has one pigment. It's kind of an alizarin red. Mm -hmm. So it takes the golden yellows or the cadmium oh, yellows. That. And in order to create it from the only yellow that it's got originally, which would be the yellow in here, mm -hmm. OK? it has to add red to it. So it can't come out with this color, which is an original pigment color, but it can come out with this interpretation of it. So it, ha it makes its own color okay. combination. Blue is a difficult one for it to read. Mm -hmm. Its blue is a light peacock blue. I may use, use several different blues. I have a half a dozen pigments in my palette. So when it shoots this green, Okay, right there, it can't be recorded. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to make some adjustments. Now what happens is some of the nuances that I want to work with leave. You can see what's happened to the grays and the depth in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other thing that happens is a lot of the darks increase. For instance, look at the reading in here. Yes. And look it's what's really fun. over here. And in fact, the 
television camera will also right, be a compromise be. on this color. So what I will do with these in here is after I've mounted them permanently or actually mated them to a large sheet of high quality support. Mm -hmm. Now currently I'm using sheets like this Now this is a paper called Stonehenge, uh -huh. okay? And it's a beautiful rag paper. Yeah, it's very nice paper. So then you mark I have paper. what's been developed, uh, cement that's been developed for the use in fabrics, uh -huh. okay, which is So it doesn't have inert, any acids in it. And no acids in it, okay? And its pH is supposed to be inert for as much as I can take care of that now. I will then coat this with a thin coating of that. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this fabric cement, it's heat activated. So then I'll be able to take this, place it, give myself adequate margins mm -hmm. in terms of a print approach, okay, and bond it, made it, make it, this paper with that adhesive mm -hmm. part of yeah. the support. So I now will have this one. Of each of these, I will have one. Yes, very nice. Okay. Uh -huh. When I've got this done, uh -huh. okay, then I turn back to my watercolors, and I'll take and I'll make all the adjustments that I want to make in here. Oh, now you can use the watercolor right on... Anywhere the surface hasn't been blocked out by the plastic binders that are used in either the thermographic, where they melt the binders in the then the product is Xerox mm -hmm. okay or in Canon where they use an encapsulated binder okay and it creates this plastic surface this plastic surface will resist water if I want to make an alteration in the plastic surface like I'd like to bring some light blues into here mm -hmm. then I will use a plastic binder in pigment which will be things like Liquitex Okay, okay, so in that way you can work. And that way I can work in and make an adjustment in anything that I want to have read, like I want to bring up some of these light blues, but I want to darken so some of these. you all of these then, yep. very carefully matching the pigments that you find. And depending on the piece, I may end up working in it a long time. I may end up radically changing mm -hmm. the piece. It may become an entirely new individual piece. But what's important to me is that you know, what I've reproduced here is permanent. In other words, my artisanry at this point is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'll be able to turn something out that'll last for more than the life of the person that, that right. gets it. Okay. And, so they're all and more than my life, so they can't get to me if it does come apart. <laughs> okay. As Jackson Pollock said, let the restorers worry about my using Duco <laughs> hardware and ammos, and they are. But really, you have research, researched it enough to know that. Oh yeah, that yeah, I know all. You know, I I really pay attention to it. Yeah, you can see now yeah. at an angle. I can the see the piece that Verna is doing right now over there is a uh, a small one that represents the growing of the Christmas tree in the Nutcracker. And th that is a worked into thermographic piece. And with a little bit of luck, I might be able to turn up an additional original. And without any luck, which is how it's running right now. Do you ever do that? Just start from the bottom? and you decide it's not going to come up that way though, then you start from the top and it's going to end up being the bottom one. And you find it was on another so side. So here, here's the series in here. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I might have redone that is because it was in the other pile. But for instance, there's a Clara that oh, has a light yeah. tone of watercolor into it. Mm -hmm. The problem with the thermographic process in this one was that I didn't get enough of Clara. Here's Clara with a different exposure, okay, 
in which Beautiful. only these yeah. lines showed. So now I put this gesture in a watercolor into the raw surface. Mm -hmm. I've embellished her hand. Okay, now this one needs an additional stroke in there. So each one is going to be a little bit different because of the hand work that you do on each one yeah. as you go and yeah. work and into it, them. Now these three are raw. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at that and in this particular edition I was using the black as the background. In future groupings, depending on how many I do, I'll use another background. Mm -hmm. Like I'm using the gold for this show. Yeah. Or the, the yellow. Mm -hmm. That helps me keep track. Mm -hmm. And in here, anything that can help keep track is important. Great working studio. Well, uh, it's deep. I think that under here, okay, I work in layers. Mm -hmm. All right. And so when I get a rush job that comes through, okay. Now under here, are all the rush jobs of Coolidge Corner. Oh. And anytime now, if I had a rush job that would come in, I'd get another large board like this, create another surface about two and a half inches taller. Oh, you work in layers. Oh, that's good. Okay, so good. under here. have to level it, mm -hmm. okay, in any file will be all of the, um, just slide that just a little more off. For instance, mm -hmm. if I wanted now any picture of T, so now I can pull out oh, huh. Alan Ladd and This Thief from Hire. <laughs> Dylan Thomas, wonderful drawing of Dylan, okay. A smaller Alan Ladd, which was always necessary, an additional Dylan Thomas, and an additional Dylan Thomas. Uh, and the ads that were created for the Thief of Paris with Jean-Paul Belmondo. And now you know. Near Bill and closes the story on Route 2 that we talked about. I think it would be great if you did several quicker color sketches for this, a cross-section of details, some overall views, some silhouette shapes, some to be squared off. I would also be great to get a sketched out map of the road. And I think Earl Follander's travel books would be good reference for this. Give me a call. We can go over these. 22. And July 22? That's the way I get them. So you drove off the route and just sketched away while Kitty okay. was driving or something like so that? So I got my manuscript, Landscape with a Traveler, oh. a life via Route 2, got my maps <coughs> out. Kitty and I went out and we did some sketching that weekend and the next Monday I called Jay and I said I'd visit with him. So we did some sketching and I showed up at Jay's office with some line sketches mm -hmm. that would show some of the details in here. For instance, there's, there, there's a piece of root two. Uh, this is a couple of sketches of the tower that's talked about in the text some root signs. These are a couple of attempts at the Belmont Hill. Mm -hmm. um, there were additional ones on here. Uh, here's a sketch of the Route 2 intersection with Sozio corn and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. What Which I eventually did was I backed up my trip and drawing out there all right, for instance, here's a few shots of video. The eventual ones that I presented to him, I've gone and assembled. I did about three rolls of film. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a hill going up. Presented to him along with the black and white sketches that you see here. Okay. These were still in the camera. They oh. needed to be developed. I got the go-ahead on the basis of these sketches, mm -hmm. okay, and some of the other ones that I had done. So, this was so the other day, so you did the sketch. Pull them yabby yabba, and I had an uh, eight page spread come up in Yankee. That's when I came back from Buffalo, is when I knew I was going to get eight pages. Before that time, I had no idea how we'd stretch this out. Can you show me that uh, page in uh, Yankee? Okay, so. Okay, but now when did you do the watercolors of them? The next week. 
Okay, so now in you fact, took your sketches. I was doing the watercolors, and right. August 15th was a Wednesday. Uh -huh. So I called Jay and I said, Wednesday's going to be a little, little tough, okay? Uh, and he told me I could stretch it. So I called him that Wednesday with all my things ready, knowing, or pretty much ready, knowing that I would go out. So I asked him, what time Friday do you want to see me? And he said, oh, Friday's getting all blocked up. And in my heart I'm saying, oh, shit, not Thursday, man, because I want to clean these up a little bit. He said, how about Monday? So then I had more time to goof off and with, play with them. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is this. Oh, I see. Oh, great. Okay. So then you took and these sketches and you made watercolors of them. was backed up with these. And that's how you got it. Okay, so I had done this. Mm -hmm. He liked this. We took these photographs to back up the shot. And then this painting was made. Now, I made this painting by putting this in the Lucy projecting this down on watercolor paper, okay, and then freely repainting it using my references. Yeah. So the proportional material was done from this sketch. The informational material was gotten from here. When you look at things okay. in proportion... It would be this same in this case. All right, now, this is the proportional piece, mm -hmm. okay? The informational piece, unfortunately, comes out like this. Oh, I see. And it's real dull. Really? So you really had to just... Okay, so you've to got them. to to change them around. Now, I also did a view back into Boston. I did views of all of these. Oh. For instance, here's this. Here's that. And there's that. Do you have the sketch of this? Let's see, all of the sketch. Well, I didn't do a black and white sketch. On this one, I happened to do a color sketch. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the color sketch was added to embellished. In this shot, which was the Irving factory on Route 2, which was the lead page, I had done as a square piece, completely painted. And we wanted to vignette it, so I added these two wings. Oh. And that allowed me to put in the parking lot that was in my photograph. Mm -hmm. Here's the, oh, that's our car. Oh. <laughs> uh, in the photograph, I had the door open. In, in the painting, I shut the door and put the car back on the road. Was, I can do that. What I loved about it over here, okay, is the mill in Irving makes toilet tissue. Mm -hmm. So all of these bags and these beautiful colors are the pink, the yellow, yes, and the blue I have seen toilet that. tissue. I that, 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 that blew too, me away. And it was really surprising to me yep. that they really are these wonderful pastel colors. That's exactly in this what it was. Factory, mill factory. All right. Here's the shot on the last page. This one at Williamstown. Yes. Okay, and. Okay, now, Bill. There's my Indian shot. I got to talk to you about the Indian shot. I absolutely loved it. Did this Indian just pop up in your mind, or where did he come from? He's, here he is. It oh, exists. Wow, oh, yeah. Now, the funniest thing about this is I had done the painting, and I had done a tall vertical painting of it. Mm -hmm. I changed some of my angularity and I forgot my, okay. And then as I was doing it, I realized that I had nothing that indicated scale. Mm -hmm. So I added a wing to my painting by taking another piece of paper, putting it off to the side, and I continued that around. I had the prerogative of getting rid of all of this. And I added a couple of cars in here that were across from the Indian, so you could realize that he's about two stories tall. Now, I have also all of the paintings that are on the rest of this that he didn't choose to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are probably six or seven more paintings in addition to the uh, roughly half dozen that he did use. One, two, three. We did a map. I did a couple of maps. The one he really wanted to use was a painting of the Howard Johnsons. And he actually had the Howard Johnsons in his presentation, but the travel editor insisted on a map. I had done two maps. One of them was... Okay. So you did this map? Oh. No, no. In the 
outfit had to do it, yeah. so they did that in-house up there. So, so I'm getting those back. Spread. Eight, eight. One, eight. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this is this month, right? Yeah. This is November of 1991. Yeah. And I've had a couple of other big spreads. Yeah. It was just in July. And this is what these eventually showed up as. We did a stroke of genius. Oh, yes. We have some of the sketches that you did for that. Okay, that's there. Right. Now we went out and we did all the watercolors. Remember right when, here. when they got blown? Look right here. Yeah. On the floor? Yeah. But what I've got over here, well maybe they're upstairs right now. I have them over here. The trouble with my layers. I just collected all the ones that I did on the site when you were backing me up with the video. Uh -huh. And they are horrible. I mean, they just fell in the water. Damn. Well, let's just the talk water. about these right here that we right. can have an idea of how Now, this is a small, a small sketch of them that are put together. And this is the workup. Eventual presentation to him. Oh, I see. So okay. let's see the steps from where it started because it, it's always interesting to see how you. Series of sketches. Site. And then you reduce them here. Yeah, well, you know what's funny? I haven't got these because I've done one, two, three variations of this move. Okay, and the final one that's on here is deeper. These were the earlier ones that I did. <coughs> and then ahead of that, I did black and whites. These are the black and whites. Okay, so Someone that I take off time. From your video, yeah. 1244. Oh, we have to get them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the ones I did from your video. Mm -hmm. I had two huge pages of these, or actually three pages mm -hmm. of these going, and they all came from different angles. For instance, these are all going this way, these are all going this way. Another set were all the ones coming mm -hmm. towards us, if you remember. So I had all of those. We eventually picked these six. Mm -hmm. Okay. The opaque projector. Yes. And from those, I redid these. Okay. He eventually chose from the series I did of four sets this set. Okay. Now this set is around someplace of the more vertical ones instead of the square up one. That's amazing. It works out. Okay. We did them in a straight line when we were talking about them. Eventually he chose to do them this way. He asked me for the yellow background. He came up with a green background in his eventual design. <laughs> okay, but this is the what series. What month was this in? That's in July this year. Okay. There's one of our original sketches when it was freezing that yeah. day. I remember the day the wind was blowing. So that we were trying to sketch <laughs> him out of the is this. and I was putting rocks on the paintings to hold them down so the wind wouldn't blow them. And Vernon was videotaping. And so then it reaches to this final project. Yeah, this is what he eventually used.